What's going on? Happy Thursday to you guys. This is the Orlando Real Live. This is Kristen. How hey, are you, Kristen? I'm great. I'm here. My favorite place. All right. We are trying out something new. So you guys have to try, just hang out with us for a little bit. We've got Go Live over here. We're going live over on Instagram as well. So we're going to try to see all of the different feeds if we can. We're going live at the Orlando Real on Instagram. We're going live on YouTube here, where many of you guys are watching over on X, LinkedIn, yeah, X, Twitter, right? We're all X. over trying to catch everybody that we can. But the first thing we always ask every time we go live is just where are you guys watching from tonight? And we've already have people checking in from New York City. Good to see you, my friend. We got Brenda checking in from St. Charles, Illinois. Wow. Bob's checking out for the first time in Winter Garden, heading back to Massachusetts, it says. Uh, this is getting like our screen's getting smaller and smaller. I know, with I'm all like, of how these are you reading screens. this? <laughs> <laughs> back over on Instagram. We're just going to check in and say hi over there. We've got a lot of people checking in as well. Uh, I think this over here, we got uh, Liz checking in. She's on our team. This is very, very, very cool. Oh my gosh. There's people checking in from London. So much to look at right oh, now. Oh, I love this. Okay. So stick with us because this is a little bit of a new format for us tonight, but we're going to get through it. I'm really excited to hang out. We got some news tonight. We're going to talk about uh, pretty much every update that I can think of that you guys have asked us for over the past week. We've been hearing people ask about the Olympus project. We finally got some good updates for you there. Uh, we're going to talk about some new development news all over Central Florida and really answer your guys' questions. And that's why we do this every single time is just to get to know our audience a little bit better, answer better questions around theme parks, real estate, and living in Orlando. How's your week been so far? It's been so busy. There's yeah. just been so, so much going on, but I'm really excited to get some of these updates because I've had a lot of people asking about like Disney updates, right? What yeah. is their response to <laughs> Universal doing all this oh, stuff? Oh my gosh, and yeah. So I'm excited. Who Huge. else is here? Who else is checking in? Oh yeah, I got to go back over the comments. Here we go. Check this out. I think mm. I saw Hills of Mineola, Lake Nona. Samantha checking in from Huntington Beach, California. We got Mike checking in from Waterley. So lots of people. We got between all of our different accounts, it looks like a few hundred people checking in. So this is very, very cool. What? So Kristen, let's talk about one of the biggest projects on the west side of town, which is the Olympus Project. Yeah. So, yes. so this is uh, Olympus Project here is, it says town center project ramps up in Claremont. Here's what's next. Um, and I'm so, excited about this because there's yeah. been a lot of people that we've been helping to find new homes in this area mm -hmm. with the potential of this huge project that's coming. And so I get calls all the time like, hey, have you heard anything? What's happening? <laughs> right. So let's get it. Let's get to it. Yes. So it says, uh, this is from the OBJ. They said Olympus town center project ramps up in Claremont. Here's what's next. So for those of you guys that don't know, the Olympus Project is basically a million square feet or so of both recreation. They've got a hockey rink, they've got medical, they've got retail, they've got apartments and lots of residential. So single family mm -hmm. homes and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, right now, all that's there is homes. It's homes and, yeah. and so Kristen, we talk about this with our clients often. It's like, is it going to just be another Horizon West? Because it is right next to Horizon West. It is. And for the longest time, Horizon West was just houses. Well, I mean, for the longest time. For the longest, but we like, did see for like things a decade. Out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this seems a little bit more planned out, I think, than Horizon West was initially, yeah. right? Because it was just residential was the main focus. And I think the point of all this was we wanted to get the residential in first, so that yep. way we would have people there when the infrastructure came in for this project. That's right. I'm really excited about it. I know a lot of people are. There's going to be so many things to do in yes. this community. Yeah. And the one thing I love about Claremont in general is that there's already a lot of infrastructure for roads over there. Uh, they're already getting ahead of it for schools and a lot of other cool things. So what's going on? The big project though, because people were saying, okay, there's residential coming in, neighborhoods coming in, but is this, this is starting to feel like Horizon West because there's not a lot of retail and things lot. coming on. Yeah. <laughs> so OBJ says, hey, finally, Olympus Town Center project ramps up and then here's what's next. So basically they're finally moving forward with the 243 acre master plan community that's going in with the infrastructure, some of the bigger pieces over there. Uh, they're going to be starting out with apartment buildings. They're also going to be doing some 20,000 square feet of commercial space Yay! and then eventually 150,000 square feet of restaurant, retail, medical and office space. That's what we want to hear. Yeah, that's what we want here we yeah. want to i mean it, houses are great the fact that it's much more affordable great right people who are looking in horizon west a lot of times i will advise them to also look at this area of claremont because it is more affordable is. and there is development coming yes. right so yeah. i'm excited 150,000 square feet of restaurant yeah. retail <laughs> medical and office yes oh finally maybe we'll get a kelly's a boxtail <laughs> probably wouldn't i mean that be nice? it wouldn't be orlando <laughs> if there wasn't one of those things uh so here's a couple of other interesting things to me um so actually just yesterday uh the mayor and uh the orange county mayor and lake county they all got together because they're opening 516, which is that road. It's the new toll road that's going to be connecting those Wild. two areas. So uh, that breaks ground. We'll officially 
you know, broke ground with a little shovel thing yeah. yesterday and then, or, or today as well. And, uh, they're going to be doing that through 2027, which seems like a long time. That does seem, but it's actually not because you know how it's long not. it took the I4 expansion. It's going to be another <laughs> decade. Yeah, for sure. Right. Um, and so it's within three years or so, we're going to get a lot of through traffic between Orange County and Lake County. So I think Olympus is going to be by the time that all of those roads open, much of that's going to be open as well. Oh, definitely. What do you think that's going to do to home values in that area? You know, I think it's going to, I look right now and I feel like Claremont is maybe 10% cheaper than Horizon West, would you think? I, I'd agree. Yeah. yeah. And so maybe it gets to be close that gap to maybe a 5% difference. Orange County in general is already selling for a little bit more than Lake County. Uh, but I think that the more you open up and the more cool stuff there is that way, it could be that Claremont becomes even more desirable. It might, but, I mean, it's beautiful landscape it's beautiful. wise. And that's one of the things that it has that we can't recreate in Orange County. That's right. You've got, you've got lakes there. You've got state parks. You've got rolling hills. hills. Yeah, it feels doesn't even feel like Central Florida <laughs> out there, which is really very cool. Um, what what do you what do you? When was the last time you went to Disney? Oh my goodness, like a week ago, maybe. Yeah, yeah. what's like what's your like favorite thing to do at Disney? So I'm one of those people that just likes to hit Disney for like two hours. I'm coming in, right I'm coming out. out. I don't want to hang out too long. It's too hot. Right, there's too many people. <laughs> Although today it was. Perfect. Oh, now. it was perfect. If we weren't here, we would be at Disney. No, that's we, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. But we love you guys. Yes, so exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of you guys, there's a lot of other people checking in today. We've got uh, Alex checking in from the packing district over recently from the milk district. What do you think about the milk district? You're down that way. Oh my gosh. One of my favorite districts. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite underrated areas. <laughs> Another Ken checking in from Colorado Springs. Currently working with Ray Powell on our team. That's amazing. Nice. Welcome to the area. The reason I ask you about Disney, so this is an interesting one. So um, there was this lawsuit with the Central Florida Tourist Board Oversight Committee yep. and Ron DeSantis, essentially our governor and the board were suing Disney based on how they were operating. It's been a big thing over yeah. the past year or so. A lot of headlines, not a lot of action. Not a lot of action. And so unfortunately, I felt like that pulled a lot, like put the brakes on a lot of the different stuff that was going on here as well with Disney. Uh, but today it was really cool because it, now that a lot of the, the, the fighting has been maybe squashed for a while it's quieted down <laughs> yeah um we've got basically this new thing so disney confirms largest magic kingdom expansion in history oh my gosh um, i'm like, so thinking like excited waiting about with this. Bated breath yeah. for this and we won't know specifically what's going on although a lot of people you know last year um josh tomorrow said hey listen this is going to be beyond thunder big thunder mountain there's going to be potential potentially okay. a village a villain's land there was going to be a lot of other things back there but it was all kind of like maybe it was blue sky here's what we could do well they have the land they right? have, the, land, so they yep. have the infrastructure for it so they really the sky's the limit just tell us what you're doing yeah, <laughs> exactly <laughs> and so now you look over here and so uh scott over on x he talks about walt disney world is currently in the process of filing permits for developing work behind magic kingdom that will prepare for future expansion expected to be the largest expansion in park history so that's huge because it's not that they've given us any indication on what exactly they're doing but they're preparing the land yeah so they know what they're doing it does yeah 100%. they just haven't told us oh, yeah I, I, so okay i was thinking about this today so epic universe is coming and if you checked us out over on instagram we, we ran with a reel today where there was some audio that came out of the shareholder meeting where bob Iger said hey we've known about epic universe coming we've been updating our parks and we kind of have a plan. And so if I'm Disney, when is like the perfect time to drop new information about what you're going to do? The same day that Epic Universe opens. <laughs> exactly. The more <laughs> the more information that comes out of Epic Universe, the more people are going to be like Disney's going to say, "Oh, by the way, we're also doing all Disney's of these gonna things." Disney's going to let them have their moment. Yeah. And then they're going to say, "Hold my beer." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Here, you go. Here are all the things that we're doing. <laughs> Uh, and so that makes sense to me, but Disney's going to be spending $60 billion on all of their parks. That's not just here in Orlando. There's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff going on in Disneyland and all of their other parks across the, the world. Um, but it does seem like they're going to be spending quite a bit of money here. I think they should. They've got to. They have They've to. got to get the excitement back, right? We're all going to be at Epic Universe for for the foreseeable <laughs> future. So how does Disney lure us back in? I mean, hello, more at Magic Kingdom. I'm there. Yeah, right? I agree. I'm totally. There. And so I think that, you know, yeah, I, I don't know. I go on like Rise of the Resistance and half the ride is down. Yeah. I'm like, listen, I do think that mo both parks, Universal. Well, well, when's the last and, time you went on Space Mountain? Let's be honest. Oh, it's have been a hot minute. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't go on it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You as an adult, your bones, are, you're, you're like, oh, my back, <laughs> like, my neck. Jeered my around back, a little bit. Right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I just I think that they do need to take care of their parks that they already have, which is great. I'm glad they're reinvesting in the infrastructure, but they need something that is going to hopefully bring down, down well, these crowds a well, little bit. You have bit. to think about it like this, Ken. Like our technology advances so much year over year, mm -hmm. and they spend so much time developing 
developing these rides that by the time they put the ride in, it's like the technology's already increased and changed yeah. and done, done something more. So yeah. we really do need to see, we love our iconic rides and things like that, that we don't really want to change. But for the most part, there's some things out there that maybe just some new tracking systems would be <laughs> maybe nice. Maybe just something. You know, just <laughs> yeah. Maybe they could update it to where we don't feel like we're like leaving, you know, leaving with a crank uh, yeah, in our neck. Like a neck so neck over, over on uh, Instagram, I've got some questions. So if people are asking, Hey, I'm looking to move from Alabama. Where's the best place for younger families? So this is an interesting one because we have a lot of clients that homeschool. And so I always look at like, okay, if you're homeschooling, then where's, what else do you like to do outside of your house? Mm -hmm. But if you're thinking about younger families and you're looking at schools. That's going to be the first thing that I would, I would ask. I would ask as you well. Know, what, what, what is important to you? Is it schools? We can focus that in on that first. Mm -hmm. And then what is your lifestyle? Like, do you like to take the kids to local parks? Do you want to have amenities in your community? Do you want a gated community? Yep. Do you want to have a local pool? Like there's some things that we would need to answer before we could really kind of point you in a direction. Mm -hmm. um, but there's so much that just popped straight into my head, yeah. right? As you were reading that question. So, you know, just a little bit more context and we can absolutely find something. Yeah. I think, yeah. And also there's like, there's public schools, there's private schools. There's, there's so many things to think about if, yeah. if young family is part of it. But um, it's funny because every time someone asks me that it's so subjective because they're like, Hey, it's almost like someone asking you, where's a good place to live? Like, it's just, there's, there's tons, yeah, there's yeah. hundreds. Or, or somebody saying, Hey, what's, what, what's a good place to eat? And it's like, well, do you like Mexican? Do you like <laughs> right, Chinese? Yeah. Do you like, you know, it's hard. Yeah. Do you like pizza? I can tell you. Yep. Yeah. Ben explores <laughs> over on Instagram says, Hey, do we know if the Imaginarian campus in Lake Nona may resume development? It was canceled during this flight or this fight. Right. So I think, uh, it'd be great for Orlando. I listen, I think it would be great for Orlando as well. Um, I think that right now, from what I know, Disney still owns the property mm -hmm. and that has not reverted back to Tavistock. And so for now, it's always a possibility yeah. until they sell it back and, and say, no, we're done with it. But I think you're right. I mean, stock price was tanking, um, you know, overall pricing for the, the, the company wasn't doing super well. And so they pulled back and, and it makes sense at the time. Cause from what I hear, it was like, it went from like a billion dollar campus or I think the original 800 million to like, all of a sudden now it's a billion five yeah. plus jobs and all the other kind of things that they're going to have to invest into these people. Um, it made sense for the time for them to, Public to pause. Public image is everything. It's mm, so yeah. crazy how that affected the stock market that way, that little felt like a little fight. I mean, at the time yeah. it was definitely dramatic. We were like, Oh no, yeah. what's happening? And then yeah. afterwards we're like, that was petty, <laughs> but we're, you know, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, Joel has a great question and thank you for the super chat, by the way, you don't have to do that, but thank you so much. Uh, so he said, hey, I want to get your opinion on Eagle Creek when comparing it to other neighborhoods in the area. So Joel, so for those who don't know, Eagle Creek is over in the Lake Nona area. Mm -hmm. It's, it's technically not Lake Nona because it, like, it Actually, the other side of Narcoosie is where Lake Nona is, but it's Lake Nona adjacent. So for we those, encompass it. We encompass yeah. it in the area. Um, and so who, here's the cool thing. It's gated, which is amazing. There's no CDD. It's a golf community. And Jones Homes build a, builds a really great house. Um, it is, a, I think, a little cookie cutter. A little bit. But location-wise, it's amazing. It's hard to beat the, the whole yeah. neighborhood as, as well. I mean, so you're really close to Narcoosie. You've got the elementary school kind of right inside the neighborhood. There's a lot to like there. There's townhome product. There's golf cart course product. Kind of everything you want. Um, compared to, say, Laureate Park, how would you say it compares to Laureate Park. Laureate Park feels a little bit more, I guess, like young professional in a way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Whereas um, that area feels it's it's definitely gated. It's got they. I mean, the trick or treating I hear in there is insane. <laughs> it's insane yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of community events, which is, that's not like not happening in Laureate Park, but it's definitely a little bit more spread out. I would say mm -hmm. versus like a little bit more niche down and, and family mindset. I think you know your neighbors a lot more when you live in there. At least that's what I've heard because I don't live in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but Laureate Park feels a little bit more spread out. I think a little bit more city like. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Emily says, Hey, we need your help to sell our home and find a smaller home in Dr. Phillips celebration or Windermere and definitely reach out. Shoot us a DM. We're yeah. happy to help at any time. Oh my gosh. Definitely. Um, let's see. How do I feel about, what do I see? How do I feel about the new day club being built in SeaWorld area? Do you know about that? I don't know anything about that, but know. a club by SeaWorld. That <laughs> no, sounds something like, that sounds like something SeaWorld would do. <laughs> I love that. Have I've, you seen the, the videos or the TikToks of the mime in SeaWorld that does no. like the pre-show entertainment? Are you serious? It's so funny. SeaWorld's hilarious. I think it's really cool the way that they're starting to move towards like roller coasters. Entertainment. And, uh, entertainment more yeah. than, um, like from where I'm from, there's a place called Cedar Point and it was like all roller coasters. It kind of reminds me of that, but yeah. like you've got a little bit more sea life and there's like, I think it's a way to, to teach kids some really cool stuff and then also entertain everywhere adults as well. Yeah, I agree. They're going, they're leaning more into the conservation education rather than the dolphin shows that they used to have before okay. and a lot more 
actual entertainment, which yeah. is fun. I think it's great. Um, so Kellen over on Instagram, we've got a lot of interaction on Instagram. Thank yeah. you guys. By the way, this is our Hi. first time ever going live on Instagram as well as all the other places. So this is very cool. Uh, but Kellen says, Hey, Ken, come eat at our new restaurant coming in Audubon Park. Uh, it's uh, in, in the Kelly's Ice Cream Plaza called Coro. I'm there. Yeah, he says I'm the chef there. That's super cool. Oh my Listen, gosh. Well, you know, we love Audubon Park. I'm always there over at East End Market. And there was actually, this is Audubon Park was named one of the best neighborhoods in America recently. I think people sleep on Audubon Park. I totally agree. I mean, you're Because really... there's a lot of older homes in there yeah. that are not necessarily remodeled and modern. Yep. But you're starting to see something very similar that was happening in Winter Park or still is happening in Winter Park, yep. where these 1950s bungalows are being torn down and these mansions are being built in there. <laughs> yes, yeah. And it's walkable to Gideon's, right? Gideon's, I, that's, I'm there too much. I mean, Winter the... Park Biscuit Co. That's my thing right <laughs> that's there. Um, all right, let's keep, I want to make sure we keep there's a lot of comments to keep up with i love this so oh let's keep gosh, going yeah. on a few more uh comments or other stories we want to talk about so more shops restaurants and to the shops that's at the other fashion thing square about Audubon park it's right next to fashion square it really is and so what tell us about fashion square you grew up going there you said. i grew up going to fashion square back when it was like cool to go to fashion square is it's, it still cool it's not so cool, not so anymore. cool anymore no offense except for a little bit of fence fashion square um so it used to be just very vibrant there was a lot of different shops and and restaurants and things like that in the mall it was like yep. the, the place to hang out it's hot in the summer you go to a mall that's what we did as yep. kids um and now it's it's like a ghost town in there. Yeah, there's a it, spirit Halloween. That, like, <laughs> it's like so, <laughs> August one. There's spirit. There. So, so here's a cool thing that's going on at uh, Fashion Square Mall. Small. So eventually, from what I understand, Bank Corp, who has the leasing space all tied up at, at Fashion Square, is trying to partner with Unicorp, or Unicorp's trying to partner with them to Solid. redo that entire area. So apartments, hotel, new retail, new shops. It'll be fantastic. But it's been tied <sighs> up for quite some time. They yeah. haven't really moved, and especially with the climate. That we're in yeah. with commercial lending and all that kind of thing it's just slowed down so to see actually these shops coming and this story is by laura kinsler over at growth spotter we love we love laura uh so more shops there these are actually coming more of the outskirts so they don't have to wait for the redevelopment from bait corp and that sort of thing uh, but there's going to be a whole bunch of new stuff coming to that area and i think it's needed like, it's so needed, but what's going to happen to Audubon Park after that and Colonial Town and all these areas right yeah. around it or the home prices are going to become a little bit more desirable. Yeah, um, I'm well, I'm excited about it. We need a little bit more walkability and things like Mills 50 did a really good job when they started putting in all these different restaurants. So yep. maybe we're just getting like an extension of that down I, Colonial. I hope so. I mean, that's how a lot of this stuff happens, right? It's kind of just like starts at the core and starts spreading out. But if I lived in like Baldwin Park, like the downtown area of Baldwin you Park, amazing. You should live in Baldwin Park. I love Baldwin Park. It's That's great. totally your vibe. No, you should really live is. in Baldwin Park. It's like the celebration without the without the Disney. Yeah, it is, but it's a celebration with all of the really cool downtown vibes too. Yeah, totally. You can walk. It's super walkable. There's running trails. There's the lake. It's Every beautiful. type of restaurant you could possibly imagine. Super close to Winter Park. And that's where a lot of people go, right? Right now, it's, all the time. if you're in yeah. Baldwin Park, you're pretty much kind of going up towards yep. Winter Park. To Park enjoy. Avenue, Winter Park Village. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, it's like see. central. So you've got Soto and then you've got Winter Park. You're right in the heart of it. I mean, apparently, I'm buying a house in Baldwin Park because I, cause say, I just talked myself into it. <laughs> um, so going back to our question about the Eel Creek. So we got people chiming in saying, hey, we like people love Love, uh, Eagle, love Eagle Creek, which is pretty cool. Um, all right. So here's a good question by Gregory Davenport or St. Cloud. What do you think? What do, when people reach out and they're asking, which area of town should I go in? And, and those were where they end up. Why do you think they would end up there? Let's answer that question first. Well, I help a lot of people in Davenport who are looking for short-term rentals or properties that are like a second home that, that they can offset some of the cost of it by renting it out while they're not there. Yep. Um, St. Cloud, I would say, is a little bit more like, hey, we wanted to live in Lake Nona, but the prices are a little bit high. What's something similar or nearby that we can look at? And that's when I would point them towards St. Cloud. Yeah, I think that you nailed it. That's exactly right. I think eventually Davenport, especially once they get their infrastructure settled with new roads and schools and that kind of thing, uh, it'll be even more desirable. Yeah. But right now it's a lot of a lot of short term rentals. It's a lot very of very transient. Like yeah. Yeah. Whereas St. Cloud is it's huge, massive, but massive, and you've yeah. got uh, Sunbridge is there, but then you've got the downtown area and a yeah. lot of really great neighborhoods in St. Cloud. So people just like in a more affordable spot to go. Yeah, it's just and it bleeds right into the Lake Nona area too. So there's parts of it where like, are you in St. Cloud? Or are you in Lake Nona? It's nice. Um, mm -hmm. It's definitely a really good option. I'm, it's insane to see because that's where my parents live. Yeah. And it's really wild to see just over the past six years how that area has completely changed. I mean, I used to be like, I'm not going to St. Cloud. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And now I'm like, whoa, where am I? This is crazy. <laughs> right? St. <This> Cloud? <laughs> this, is cra this is crazy. Uh, so LA Dream says, hey, what's best east or west We're gonna Orlando? Get a fight. We're going to get a fight about this. We're gonna so fight. I live in west, the west side 
outside of, we'll call it great Orlando. I hope that's the question you're ans- asking, not specifically the city, uh, but I live on the West side. Where do you live? I live in the better side. The better side. <laughs> so I think, again, it comes back down to like, what are you into? So for us, we're at the theme parks all the time. We, we enjoy that kind of thing. Um, we wanted something that was like a newer area with newer developments. Why did you like the East side? I like the East side because first of all, I grew up over there. So there's a lot of nostalgia, but I love the old houses, the hundred to 200 year old oak trees and the vintage farmhouses and the cobblestone bricks and the little ice cream shops tucked away into the neighborhood. That's my vibe. That's your jam. Yeah. And Disney's 40 minutes away. It's fine. We get there. <laughs> yeah, you get there. <laughs> it's just not like 10 or 15. Like, exactly, oh yeah, so that's, that's totally exactly. fine. Um, and so we had another question. Oh gosh, that was popping up here. We've got a bunch of them. I'm trying to keep I know, up here. This is so great. Um, but oh, yeah. by the way, keep dropping them down below. We'll, we'll keep up. We'll try to get to yours at tonight. And if not, we'll answer after the show for sure. Um, let's go over this other qu- uh, other story that I have. So developer green expands vision for the Paramore Heights high rise district, which well, did you know that there even was a Paramore high rise district? I did not know there was a Paramore high rise district. And I <laughs> yeah. love that. Like, let's rebrand. Yeah, right. Let's, Apparently, do, let's this. do this. Yeah, so Timothy Green, he's actually filed some uh, plans over for a 32 story mixed use tower on West Church Street. And so uh, we did a whole video. This was maybe three months ago around Church Street and everything that's coming there. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Young with Interstruct is doing a great job helping lead the way up and mm-hmm. down that way. Uh, oops, looks like this went off. That's exciting. Oh, um, we're back. We're back. And we're back. Um, um. So, but here's the thing with <laughs> Timothy Green and what he's doing. So he's trying to take a, a, what's currently zoned as a, oh, is it still going? There it goes. Boom. Uh, what's currently zoned as industrial and rezone it into multifamily with like retail and a whole bunch of like actually really take the Paramore neighborhood and make it incredible. This is because it's like an extension of downtown, right? It so is. They're, it's like they're starting on Church Street and they're kind of scooping it down into that area That's right. by the arena. That's I mean, I've always thought this area was so underutilized and not loved on. And yeah. I love that we're starting to put some some effort into this because I really think that there's, it's just like an untouched, beautiful area that we're just like ignoring, which yeah. is wild to me because it's walkable to downtown. It's walkable and the land is is really cheap. And I feel like this is going to be the first area that gets gentrified kind of like in the downtown area, yeah. which like whether that's good or bad, we definitely yeah. need to make sure we continue to push affordable housing. And oh, so there, we, we have to make that like the, very important for this area. Agreed. So, so long as we do that, I'm on board. We love it. So what they're doing is using the Live Local Act, which basically says that they're going to have to set aside at least 40% of the units for affordable housing. Uh, but the way that it was presented to the board was that there would be 500 residential units, 300 of them would be rent restricted affordable units. Okay. So, um, so, so they're helpful. capping how much they can charge. And then people yep. who, okay, this yeah. is beautiful. And, or like, you know, Hey, if somebody's like lower income that they have to take a certain amount of these and say, Hey, like these people can only rent these if they make a certain amount of money or less. Those are going to sell out so, so fast. fast. And yeah. then there's gonna be a waiting list for them. So I will, I think that will show how badly that this product is needed mm-hmm. by how quickly that goes. Agreed. And hopefully we'll develop more of that. Yep. So it's got a long way to go in terms of what's going to happen because they have to get through development process. And apparently, um, mixed use like this usually doesn't go on top of industrial space. So he's trying to use a current zoning that doesn't really go for this. And yet he's like, Hey, listen, this is so needed in the area. And I think trying to slip through to make it work. So it'll be mm-hmm. interesting. I actually reached out to their office today to get a little bit more information. Cause I am interested to find out their plans for the yeah. area. Because I think that if you got a cohesive plan for church street and you have affordable housing meets retail yeah. and a lot of other cool stuff, it could be amazing. Let's not completely change the landscape of this area. Let's make it better. Right. Let's just take what's there and put some energy and love into it and really let it be what it needs to be, which is just making Orlando one big giant bubble of love. Right? <laughs> like we need this. Plus, it's so cool. There's so much land over there. There's... I can really see a lot more restaurants and, and shops and things like that. I think because the, it's affordable over there, maybe we could see some mom and pop shops popping up I hope and so. things like that. Not just commercial, big, big known commercial, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, I agree. <laughs> I think um, I look at like the downtown area, the Church Street corridor on, on the like near Amway is really needs some love. But it there's has, it has so much potential, so much potential. But it's really close when I look at the old, like the Bumby Arcade, Reef Food Hall and everything going on over there. There's a lot of cool stuff where it gets to be brick paver streets that would be very quick once they kind of make, I think, Orlando safer downtown, which they're pushing yes. for these after hours laws and that sort of thing, I think are helping the downtown more area. Outdoor more outdoor spaces where people can hang out with families. And, and I think that would be very essential. Cause I remember when we were walking around park Avenue and we're like, look at how many people are out and about, and there's so much <laughs> green space. There's a lot of outdoor seating, a lot of restaurants with outdoor seating. And then you go downtown and it's just bar, 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 <laughs> coffee shop, coffee shop, 
dentist, bar, <laughs> like, <laughs> law office. Yep. So what it, what's missing, I think, is that bringing the community together, which is it's enticing if there's seating and outdoor yeah. spaces and things like that. And so if they put a little bit into that, I think that's going to really change that landscape a lot. I mean, yeah. it would make me want to go to downtown a lot more for sure. What do you think about the under I-4 park then with all of that going on? The canopy, they call it. I think this is genius. I don't, yeah. I know people say we need more parking and so we should put parking, but no, we don't need more parking. <laughs> we need green space and interactive space and space where kids can play with their families so that parents will bring their kids to run around and kind of change the landscape for how that's yeah. going to feel. Yeah. Also green. We need some green. We over need there. some greenery oh space. My gosh. So they're going to use it as uh, they're going to set aside some parking for this, but the canopy project downtown, they've got the Kia center. You can see in like kind of North, North. West side. I still can't. I, when you say Kia Center, it confuses me. I At know least it's that not it's not Kia Arena. Yeah, Ki, yeah, Arena. the arena, right? No, I, Kia Arena. Yeah. I just I keep forgetting that it's the Kia Center. The Amway. So like, what are you talking about? So the Amway. Is, yes, <laughs> that's what it's called. So it's under I four. All of this right here, where it says Canopy Project Area, this is literally under I four. And so to see what's coming in that area, like I'm, I'm excited. Now, people in our comment section over on Instagram or and TikTok were talking about, well, gosh, there's going to be like. It's going to be homeless and there's going to be trash Probably and there's going to be all these other things. First. So it's yes. going to be a project for the city to keep up with everything going on. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's very, um, what's the word? Like futuristic to mm -hmm. have like the green space underneath the uh the big roadway down yes. there so yeah. i do see that there probably will be an issue with a lot of homeless people you know residing in this area but you know they need their space too so let's let's make a little park for them too we'll see <laughs> we'll see what happens and how right? they keep up with it um and aces mcqueen says any thoughts on winter park i'm looking for an, an apartments around there what do you think about winter park we just did a video about winter park we so did. please go to our youtube channel and watch it we talk about what makes winter park so special mm -hmm. we actually spent some time walking around Park Avenue on the avenue of on the, the, avenue. the local say. The cool um, and, say. And we did a video earlier where we, we actually interviewed people who were walking around and asked them why they liked Winter Park and what was so special about it. So I could talk all day long about Winter Park, or you could just go watch that video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. So AK says, what's the what's the next stop look or the next top location after Windermere? I would probably say Winter Park. Winter Park. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, we've got other couple of people who are missing out on Crooked Anne. Uh, Perry asks, hey, the Crooked Can in Mineola, have they completed it yet? No, they haven't even started it yet. So uh, from what I understand, the designers have been chosen and the builders have been chosen, but they have not broken ground yet. So that's something that I'm always paying attention to. That'll be a game changer. Uh, huge game changer. And so going back to the Olympus Project where we started today's video, uh, so I was actually driving out there today. And so you got Lennar is... They're cranking out there. Oh my gosh, they're so busy. I mean, like their like, homes are affordable. They are. So people are obsessed. Yes, and so they haven't even started moving really dirt for Olympus Project yet. But like a lot of the retail, so you've got Lancy Homes, Ridgeview, Lennar. They're kind of just out there cranking and doing really well. Yeah, a yeah. lot of activity over there. Pretty yep. cool. I've actually helped three people buy in that in Lennar that community. community. Yeah, Wellness Ridge. Yeah, yeah. It's, I feel it's I feel beautiful, like, and it's right by yeah. Southern Hills Farms. It is. So whenever I go out there to show houses, I always stop at Southern Hill. Right now, it's sunflower season and blueberry picking season. So you just pop in. You just pay for a little bucket. Go pick your own blueberries. They they're actually doing a lot of development over there. There, I think they've been really successful with all the new <laughs> oh, homes God, that yeah. have been happening. Well, because Sinclair, <laughs> the Sinclair Road uh, is or is it Showfield. Which Showfield, Showfield Road Showfield. is open now, and you can connect from like over in the Horizon West area to 27. Like I use that as a shortcut all the time now. Yeah, and so, of course, the only <laughs> thing that's on that road. Southern, Southern Hills Hill Farm. Farm. Yeah. So I used to go to Southern Hills back in the day and it was like all dirt roads. Your car would be so dirty. Your shoes would be so dirty. They literally have paved all the way from the gorgeous yeah. like pavilion that they've built with all their little shops and tables. They've paved, brick paved all the way out to the field. So you're like <laughs> walking on a brick path to go pick sunflowers. I'm like, they're really up to their game I was thinking here. of this. I was like, okay. <laughs> so we were out strawberry picking out there and I was like, this is, there has to be a machine that's putting out like this entire brick road out there. No, no, no. It's like you see them. They're like by hand. They're handling out, it like a mile. Of Here's brick road. my question. Is there so many residences in this area that are mm. still in development? Yep. They're going to have to buy more land or develop. There's not going to be enough sunflowers for us. No. To pick. <laughs> yeah. like, Hopefully they hold out, though, like Southern Hills Farm. They're going to be banking. Like, come on. Oh, when, my when gosh. These are built they out, are built to succeed at this point. Like, <laughs> It's going to be just fine. They're going to be just fine. Kevin K says, hey, do, uh, do I think that rates are going to get cut this year? It will cause further increases in prices. Yes. Uh, we're going to talk about in just a few minutes what's going on with the real estate, real estate market and the overall inventory that we have. But should rates come down the way that they say they're going to come down, which it seems as though Fannie Mae and Wells Fargo and Bank of America, they're all looking at by the end of the year, we should probably be right at 6%. So right now we're hovering about 
seven percent yeah a little seven. over seven mm-hmm. uh and what's crazy is people are still out in droves right now oh my gosh still multiple offers and and homes lasting the inventory is really we'll get there we'll get yeah, there sorry yeah, i'm, yeah, jumping, ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, jumping ahead i'm jumping so what happens when <laughs> rates come down will more people get in the market i don't you know the twos and threes they're gone like we're not going to see those again if we get back close to fives i think it's going to be game on and yeah prices oh my will. gosh fives in florida <laughs> strap in yeah strap in it's gonna be because <laughs> then of... builders are gonna be buying it down into the threes that's where you'll see threes yes if rates and on, on average are in the fives new home construction will be able to buy the rates down so that'll probably be yeah. the only time we'll see threes again yeah totally agree uh so raw sauce over on <laughs> raw sauce i don't know why tickled me uh, <laughs> looking to move to florida somewhere next year and want to rent a house first um we see a good amount of homes in davenport area is it because it's not a good area or is it a new development play does new development play a role y- yes and no like i think there's so many people that do airbnb there and short-term rentals and they 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 rent by the night or rent by the week right um so you have plenty of homes there that are currently for sale because the airbnb market has really slowed down yes. over the past six to 12 months and so um that's spread more people saying, Hey, I used to do short term rental. Maybe now I'll put my house up for long term lease. But well, you're going to get a really good deal in that area because there is a lot of competition. I agree. So it might not be a bad idea to start there, yep. um, get familiar with the area, you know, not be paying too much. Because if you rent right in the middle of like downtown Orlando or Winter Garden, you know, you may as well buy a house because the rent's so high. Yeah. Um, let's see. Ben says, what are the chances of Orlando acquiring a professional NFL team? I think it would be great for the brand. I think we'd probably get an MLB team before an NFL team. Uh, would you, would you I go? don't know what any of that means. Oh, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> John, I saw John was watching here, so he'll, he'll go with me. Oh, he will. So one of those Oh games. my gosh, please. Well, you said it out loud now. He's going to be so, telling me about it all the time. He's like, Ken said, Ken, Ken said. said, we're going to do it as soon as it comes. Uh, Vantage says, I love the show. Thank you so much, man, for checking in. We got a whole bunch of people checking. This is like, it blows Look me away. You guys want to hear about Orlando and this is so, so cool. Uh, Sean says, Hey, have I seen new construction builders offering incentives yet? Or are we still getting prices? They ask, no, they're asking, they're offering lots of incentives. So Sean, hope, hope I have you're doing a good well. story. Yeah. Oh, hit me. Yeah. I'm gonna grab water. I just help one of my clients get a new construction inventory home. And a lot of times what, like you think the price is the price, right? Yeah. Cause that's, it's a new build. They, they're, they're set the price. Yep. Well, all I did was ask, I said, Hey, is there anything that we can do now? To be fair, I have great relationships with most of the new construction reps in yep. the area. Um, but I said, is there anything that we can do? Uh, and this is a community that's sold out. So they have no reason to be providing deals or incentives on the on the homes but we got them ten thousand dollars off and full closing costs just because we asked so what does what closing costs look like so closing costs are generally in that particular community around three percent of the purchase price so we were talking about twenty four thousand dollars plus an additional 10k off the price so we got them savings of almost 40k it's huge just for asking yeah just for asking i mean yeah. and that's what we do so the relationships that we build with all of our builder clients and our builder the on-site reps are really a big part of our value mm. we're gonna be with you for the five, six, 10 months it takes you to build a house, but it's finding out which lots are available. And sometimes like they'll say, Hey, we got five lots to sell this month. Once they're gone, they're gone. Right. But sometimes they come back and we want to be the first ones to know. And we to typically are when we have good relationships. Now I'm not yeah. promising I can do that on all of the houses. So please don't be like Kristen said, um, <laughs> that's a, it can happen, that's it right. can, but you know, sometimes it is what it is. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, Kevin says, um, can confirm Kristen got me that deal. Oh, that's you. That's Yay! you. That's a correct. Congrats. That's so cool. Uh, Aces McQueen says Oakland A's should move to Orlando. I think they're moving to Vegas, actually. But what I hear is that tr- as Toronto is looking to maybe make a move. So that would oh. be very, very. Uh, yep. So the A's should. Vegas said no thanks. They did. I didn't know that. That would be incredible. I would be so, so happy. I'm a big baseball fan uh, in general. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, like opening day, we were there, like Jack and I would go all the time. Oh, I love that. Yeah. But there's no, there's, I mean, like Lakeland's cool. Cause the Tigers come to Lakeland to do spring training. We've done that a few times, but like Tampa, I just, it's a little too far for me to go drive. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Let's talk about real estate, the real estate market. I think this is one of my favorite things to geek out on. And so hopefully I got another realtor here to geek out with me. I love this. So, stuff. so sorry guys. So Let us talk, geek for a minute. So we talk a lot about like in- inventory and like inventory for you guys just means how many houses are on the market actively for sale is right there now. a lot is there a little when you go out and you say hey kristen i want a five hundred thousand dollar house a four hundred thousand dollar house in downtown and on the east side how many homes am i going to be able to see oh not a lot not a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh this inventory is, is what we pay attention to because the more inventory that's out there that sits out there the more opportunity you have as a buyer but as a seller 
you're right. You want low inventory because that means you're going to be able to list your less house. Competition. Less, com less competition. Mm -hmm. So we help both buyers and sellers. It's like, you know, we're helping about 50% uh, of both at this point. And so the goal over here is to show you guys what's going on with the market. Uh, we talk about months of inventory and this is like, hey, I'll make sure. I so what is a covering. balanced market? So they have a reference point. Yeah. Then. Balanced market is three months of inventory. This means where it's not either a buyer's market or a seller's market. And right now there's 2.61 months of inventory, which means it's trending towards a seller's market. So. Yes. Yeah. Trending towards the seller's market. Would you see so. that when you're seeing out, you're out showing houses, do you feel that? Yeah, absolutely. Especially anything I would say under 500, that's where it's a little bit tougher for inventory. I think five to seven or eight, there's a little bit healthier of a market. You do see a lot of opportunities yep. there. And then over a million, I mean, it was crazy. There was tons of opportunity and now it's kind of slowed down a little bit. Now we're seeing a little bit more I think balanced in that market as well. Yeah. Um, but if you call me and you say, we want something under four in East Orlando, close to downtown, I'm just going to say, well, let's pray <laughs> and <laughs> that we find some right in our market. dream journals. <laughs> this is right. Yeah. This is, a, this is a really interesting to me. I was looking at the overall price index where like original list price to original sales price. Now this means like, Hey, if they put it on the market and they said, you know, Hey, I want 500,000 for it. What are they actually getting at the end of the day? So original list price to sales price right now, it says is 91%, which is, I mean, eight and a half, nine percent off yeah. from list price. So how could it be, Kristen, that you have such low inventory, but all of these sellers are taking less? Well, it's probably because a lot of times sellers have been chasing the height of the market. So we had a crazy boom during COVID that's yep. never really totally slowed down, I think. Um, and we saw home values, what, more than double in some areas. And so sellers are still seeing that or, or thinking that that's a possibility. And then there are some areas where if you price a home aggressively, you do get multiple offers and, and you're still seeing a lot of activity. Um, however, buyers are savvy. The interest rates are high. So they're coming in and they're making, they're wheeling and dealing with their realtors. We yeah. always, everything's negotiable, right? A list yep. price is just a, a hope right? A hope and a dream yeah, for a seller. Starting point. Yeah. Starting point. And on, on the buy side, we're always trying to go in and see, you know, Hey, can we get closing costs? Can we get a little price reduction? Can we do this? So I think there's just a lot of negotiation happening out there to find, you know, what is a home really worth to you? Yep. And that's a conversation between the buyers and the sellers. It really is. And I think that the, the more minute we get into some of this data as well, this is also broken down into price bands. And so we've got everything from under 200 all the way down and over to a million. And if you look really over a million, there's a lot more flex than there is so when you're looking flex. at like, you know, that, what is it? Four to 500. It's almost, it's 97%. So yeah. it depends on where you're looking, the price point you're looking at going new construction, going resale. There's so many little minutia that we have to pay attention to. Yeah. I, I feel that definitely in the million plus market, I was helping some clients and we got, I think it was like $300,000 off of a $2.6 million home. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more flexibility, I think, in that market than there is in the, the lower price points. Yep. But how long is it taking for homes to sell, Ken? So on average, so if you list your house today, according to the data, it shows that there's on average about 60 days to That's get a contract. pretty standard. Yeah, I would two, say, two to months. get a contract, yeah. to get under contract. And then right? how long does it take to close? About 30 days. About, about 30, 30 days. days. Yeah. So like most people think we list our house today, it's sold tomorrow, we're closing in two weeks. That's just not how it is. I mean, maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe. If you price it right and you're in a great area. You work with us, Wink. wink um, yep. No, but yeah, no, realistically, you're looking at at least 30 days on the market to have buyers come and find the home, yep. you know, get some offers in there. So 30 to 60, I would say is pretty realistic, I think, for our market. And then another 30 days. If you get a cash buyer, then you can close in two weeks after that. But, um, you know, about a month and a half. Yep. A lot of cool questions we're going to go through right now. We're Ooh. just going to do a little bit of uh, a little fire, rapid fire here. So uh, Opa says, hey, I love you guys. Tons of good info. I'm moving to, with my family in July. Uh, you're thinking about renting in the glass house in Orlando. That's in O-Town West. Two bedroom for $3,500, which might sound insane, but you are going to be surrounded by every amenity that you want. There's Fair. a brand new school there. Um, and so I love that area. I think that you're right close to Dr. Phillips and, and it's restaurant row, restaurant and, row, and Universal Studios it's, and Oh my gosh. Talk about a, a highly active area. You're like 10 minutes, 15 minutes from Disney Springs. If you want to use that as an amenity, uh, you're 10 minutes away from universal. So I'm just a huge Dr. Phillips fan. That's the heart. I would say that's the heart of Central Florida. Right? It's hard to beat. It's yeah, like the it pricing is. on uh, the pricing of homes there is it's a sleeper. Cause you do have a lot of those older neighborhoods. Yeah. You got some crusty houses. In you there. got some really old crusty <laughs> houses. And then you have Pulte is finishing out one of the, probably the last new construction neighborhood in all of Dr. Phillips. But what are those starting at KP? 
eight nine hundred. Yeah. yeah, yeah, starting. Yep. Which I, I mean, to be fair, I would buy, I would pay that. I would pay that to live in Doctor Phillips. It's worth the price. Yeah, I totally agree. Unless you hate traffic, then don't live in Doctor Phillips. Don't <laughs> Unless you just yeah, you want to go there and then get out. But here's the cool thing: there's like there's the new uh, Daryl Carter Expressway exit going in. Yeah, they're redoing the Sand Lake exit, so yep. that's going to be really cool. There's just so many new things going on there. I think Doctor Phillips is is even still, even though it's a super popular area, it's still slept on because it's rare that like people reach out to us and they're like, Dr. Phillips is it. Yeah. It's almost like they start with Windermere because it's popular or Winter yeah. Garden or Winter Park. And then they kind of like through asking, yeah. they end up. It's almost like it's there. this little secret, right? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. if you know about it, you know, because I have had clients reach out and they're like, it's Dr. Phillips. It's only nothing. nothing. <laughs> I'm like, fair. I fair. got you. Yeah, I got you. Boo. <laughs> uh, Mark Perez over on Instagram asks, hey, I'm moving to Seattle from Seattle this month. I'm looking for an opportunity to rent with an option to buy. Is that common here? What would you say? I mean, I, I think anything's negotiable, but a lot of times those investors that have those rental properties, at least in Winter Garden, they're holding on to those bad boys. Yeah. And I think, you you know, Mark, you have to look at and ask yourself, if you were in the seller's shoes, would you do that, right? Why wouldn't you just sell? The only reason you wouldn't just sell is if you're getting more money from the leases. Mm -hmm. So if say the house is worth 600, they'll say, hey, fine, I'll do a rent with an option to buy, but you're going to pay 625. Yeah. You're going to probably overpay for it. Yeah. You're not going to get a yeah. deal. Yeah. And so as long as you're cool going in with that, that being said, there's plenty of options where you can lease, lease for a year, or if you need to lease for six months, you, you sign a year long lease and you can always break your lease. Usually it's like a two month lease break fee. And so you can get out of that and move into something else. If mm -hmm. you want to do something shorter than a year. That's also, I think people forget that that's all negotiable as well. When you have the conversation, when you're talking to the landlord, mm -hmm. Hey, you know, I am planning on home shopping. I would love for the cancellation or the break to be only one month's rent. And yep. a lot of times you can negotiate that. Yep. Absolutely. Um, Ross sauce checked in again. Sorry. I'm looking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you love that I screen. love, like, I don't Ross know why. Sauce. Yeah. Ross sauce. I, just, I, I wish it. my name was like a, like, Cool like that. Uh, Sin City Magnum says, working with you guys right now to relocate from Vegas to Orlando. Really looking forward to becoming a Floridian soon. Well, welcome. We're super excited to have you. I am curious because I constantly am comparing Orlando to Austin and Vegas. And it's because Austin is exploding with growth. There's yes, lots going fair. on there. It went from like music town to tech town. Yes. Weird. Um, Vegas went from you know, just gambling and debauchery to where there's a lot of new development, a lot of business going on there. And it's kind of cool to see. So I'd be curious, let us know in the comments or shoot me a DM. What is bringing you from Vegas to Orlando? Cause acquiring minds. Yeah, no, that is interesting. I will say when I was in Vegas, I was like, am I on iDrive? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. 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 There's vibes. It's kind of vibes definitely. there. But then I was like, oh, the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> it's like, well, that could also be. In, I feel like it, it could I, also be in Epcot or Vegas. You never know. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> um, let's see. So Santiago says, "Hey, Ken have, or and Kristen, have you had any updates on the new Reunion Resort expansion?" So there's a lot of stuff going on outside on the outskirts of Reunion. There's a lot of new neighborhoods popping up left and right. Yes, um, and they're redoing the golf courses too, aren't they? They are. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I just it's looking fantastic but in terms of the new timeshare product if that's what you specifically mean where they were going to do thousands of new units there it has not been hasn't broken ground mm -hmm. and, and they've been talking about it now for two years and i haven't seen anything actually move forward so we'll see we'll see yeah, how it goes i love reunion i think it's like this really cool secret that we have i right? agree it used to be mostly short-term rentals but there's a lot of people now who are living there full-time yeah people it's, uh, we were doing a video there not too long ago and one of the neighbors came like beelining out of a house and they're like hey yeah, we watch you on YouTube. And they're like, Hey, we want to let you know we live here now. And I was like, okay. And then she's like, well, no, you always talk about how this is a, a short-term only neighborhood, but we live here full-time and we have a lot of neighbors that now live here full-time. I'm like, so well, get your back straight. Yeah, Ken. dude. I mean, I'm sorry. If you look at the tax <laughs> records, it's like 90% of the people don't Our live there, yeah, um, yeah. but I would get it. Cause it's like, if you want to be close to the parks, you want something gated, you want the amenities. Oh, like so amenity heavy in there and yeah. the golf cart community. And then they've got the little country club there. It's cute. It is. Yeah. It's cute. Um, Kristen, do you have your calculator? Can you grab a calculator for me? Help me yeah, out. Somebody asked me a question and I just want to let's see so average sales price is 622 divide that by 2209 so someone asked what's the average price per square foot in all of central florida now this is the five county area so orange osceola lake seminole and polk, polk. 281 average average price per square foot is 281 i would say that's 
knowing all of those counties and different areas in there, it is so hyper local. So take that with a grain of salt because that yeah. is a wide average. Super wide average. Yeah. Cause there's, I mean, the, there's some areas where it's definitely not 281. No. Yeah. yeah. I was showing, I was showing houses in Golden Oak uh, this week and average sales is like over a thousand dollars a square foot. Yeah. And then you've got other price places where it's $200 a square foot. Exactly. So it's just a little yeah. bit all over. Yeah. Uh, Philip says, yo, can just, I never catch your live streams. Well, you did. Oh, welcome. 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 Good to see you. All right. We got to go clean up some of these comments over here. Let's see. Um, I want to take that lakefronty. Uh, Tim says, "I want to. I want to. <laughs> there we go. I want that new lakefront property." Ken teased today. We yeah, all so do. it's an amazing house. I, so I'll let you know once we finalize details on that one. Uh, but the lakefront house, it's get this. It's it's on an acre. It has its own dock. Wait, wait where is this? This is like East Orlando, like Lake. I can't say oh, gotcha. where it's at, but uh, <laughs> I got, we're finalizing details, and so I don't want to talk about it too much until it's 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 gotcha. fully ours. But East Orlando, so East we're talking Orlando. like how far away from downtown? Like it's it's out like Lake Known area. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. An acre over there. Acre, but it's on the lake with its own dock. Not just like, oh, my boat's out there. Like you could back up your your yacht. Oh, like an actual lake. Lake. your yacht, yeah, your yacht, <laughs> your yacht into the lake over there. Uh, but no, it's it's it, the house is. Ooh, very okay. Cool. That won't be uh, at the average price per square foot, probably. <laughs> no, this is going to be <laughs> higher than most of the comps for sure. Um, how's that? So a relocation gal says, "Hey, how's the short term rental market for investors right now?" Oh, I have so, a whole TED talk on this. So I think again, and for one, it's the neighborhood. You have to look at what neighborhood you're in. I think that a lot of people that bought short-term rentals in Winter Haven or Haines City, they're farther away from the parks. Struggling a little bit they're, with that. They're on the struggle bus right now. Yeah. Um, so if you're in these neighborhoods that were you know, not highly amenitized, you're probably struggling a little bit. That being said, because if you're paying cash and you're not worried about the interest rates being seven, eight percent for an investment property, you could probably do very well right now. Hmm. Um, but there's some sellers that are not there's doing a lot of sellers well. that are not doing well and it's just because they did purchase with interest rates being a little bit higher and then there are a lot of them are not local so they're hiring property managers to manage everything and that eats into your profit like 30 to 40 percent a lot of the times if it's not super modern if it's not super clean if it's not themed mm -hmm. and themed well and the furniture is like what does fresh, themed well even mean okay so if you slap a mickey like logo just on the wall that's not going to help you if you build <laughs> a what? disney castle wait, wait, wait. So if I, if I slap, if I slap a oh, Mickey on the wall, I won't get an extra $10 a night. Oh no, I wish. Wouldn't oh, that be great? Gosh, okay. um, no, Weird. but if you go full theming, like you've got a whole princess themed room, a lot of these turn the uh, garages into like movie theater rooms, because what do you need a garage for in a short-term rental? Course, yeah. um, you've got to have a beautiful pool. And again, the furniture has to be fresh. I see so many of these short-term rental uh, homes where the seller's like, I don't know why I can't get people to stay here. And I'm like, well, your furniture looks like it's 14 years old. People yep. don't want to stay in that when they're... You have so much competition. Yep. You've got so many options. So here's what I tell people. Go on Airbnb or VRBO and try to book yourself a hotel or, a, or an Airbnb for yourself and see how many options you have close to the theme parks and see what stands out to you. Yeah. You're probably like most people and the eye candy is going to catch you. The more bedrooms, the better. Yeah, right? that's exactly. Heads the, and beds is a huge heads one. Heads and beds, amenities, pool. It has to have a pool, right? So all of those things play a factor. Yeah, I, it's, the amount of people that reach out and they're like, well, I've got I've got a, a $350,000 budget. I want a town home and I want to do an Airbnb. And I'm like, well, probably not the best investment, right? Yeah. If it's a two bedroom, no pool, no, like if you were wanting to go online, like Kristen said, and you, you wanted to go spend some time at Disney, would you choose a place with no amenities, no pool? And then so it just doesn't make sense. But I did pull up, there's a website. Now, if you're a serious investor or this, you want this to be your business, then this isn't worth investing in. It's called AirDNA. Um, they actually go through and they break down a lot of different stuff from Airbnb, VRBO. And so this is like, if you look at, this is Kissimmee, all of Kissimmee's um, averages. So 61% occupancy, which is down from about 67, 68% we saw mm -hmm. at the height. And average daily rates, $125 per night. Over in Davenport, Weirdly enough, it's very similar occupancy, 61, but the average daily rate jumps up to 151. And so, yeah, just something you want to pay attention to is the data and, and don't get overly caught up. If you're going to treat it like a business, treat it like a business. Yeah. If you're going to use it a couple weeks out of the year, then you are the ideal candidate for yes. a short-term rental. Let's talk about that. Yeah. If you plan on using it and offsetting some of the costs because you're bringing your family, let's say you love to come to Disney two to three times a year, that's very expensive for you to do to yeah. get a hotel for your entire family. So if you're offsetting some of the costs by using this property yourself, then it makes so much sense. And because you're going to be using this, you're going to be a little more selective on the type of property that you get, which is in turn probably going to make it a little bit more marketable towards your clientele. Yeah.
that's my two cents on Airbnbs. <laughs> that's well, well said. <laughs> um, Alex T says, Hey, I saw you at Foxtail Coffee in Winter Park last week, but I was too shy and didn't want to say hi. You have to say you hi. You have to say hi. You have to do that. That's like the best thing ever. I want to hear your story and find out where you're, you're from. You're always and at Foxtail. I'm at Foxtail often. Yeah. It's a good place to work. It's like a really easy, chill place. It's nice. I like the vibes. Grab a coffee. Yeah. And the vibes are good. That's the for vibes sure. Are good. Uh, let's see. It's uh, the Rolling Stones. Hey, guys, checking in from Dr. Phillips. I've been watching through the years for the last two weeks, finally catching a live one. Well, I appreciate that. We try to keep you guys updated on everything else going on. Uh, we're going to wrap up probably in the next two or three minutes. So if you have any final questions, make sure you drop them down below. Uh, but Kristen, what are you excited about for this summer overall? Personal, business, what do you got going on? Oh my gosh, so many things. Did you see the news about Halloween Horror Nights is now going to be extending the amount of days yes. that they have? So when is it open now? When it, like, first, it used to be September. When is it opening yeah, now? Now it's in August, right? August 30th. 30th. That's early. It's going to be hot. So just, you know, keep it's that in mind. So, <laughs> keep that in mind. So hot. <laughs> Those poor performers. I remember walking. And their leather. <laughs> yeah. I remember walking in Halloween Horror Nights and it's like in, in September even and you're like at night and it's dark and you're still sweating. I mean, I don't care because I love Halloween Horror Nights, but for those of you who are concerned about the heat, I will say it will be hot, but it's going to be so cool. So that's happening. I'm really excited about that. Um, you know, what else? There's just going to be so, I feel like this summer, do you feel it too? There's like an energy I do. that's happening and we're just going to see something crazy fun happen over the summer. I think there's going to be a ton of people out buying and selling homes yep. and a lot of things happening with development, Disney and Universal. We're going to keep getting news about Epic Universe. Epic Universe is going to keep dripping on us. Universal is doing an absolute clinic on marketing this new park park Wild. they're like they're working with influencers are working with people that are in marketing they're just sort of like the slow play over the next year i think they're just doing a really amazing job i've never had more fomo than when i see you post about getting another coin i'm like <laughs> oh, i didn't <laughs> get one well yeah i mean the team got one <laughs> yes the i know team got one the creative team got one <laughs> all right so we got a couple other things uh the d hawkins uh this is just complaining about park. well this is an interesting actually conversation i'd love to just chat with you about kristen so i love to say this yeah so lake nona has so much traffic one of the worst places to live with no nightlife and apartments everywhere so when i think about lake nona i actually don't think about traffic i think narcusi has traffic narcusi is very traffic but like lake nona boulevard there's no it's traffic yeah. it's it's yeah i got another oh gosh we were online for another half hour there we go we're back um so yeah it's quiet there's like not a lot going on on that side and then yeah narcusi's slam packed yeah yeah narcusi's rough for sure so okay that being said there's on the other side, people are complaining that all these new roads are going in. Okay. Well, can't, so you can't, you can't complain about both. You have to pick a lane. Are you mad? <laughs> literally. Are you mad? Literally pick a, lane. pick a lane. Are you mad about the not having any access to anywhere because of all the traffic? Or are you mad about all the trees getting cut down for new roads so that you don't have traffic? So here's the thing. They're, they're doing a lot of great work over there, yep. especially to have a stock with the Sunridge community yep. where they're being intentional and being very cautious about nature and Florida's natural preserve. So tell me if I'm wrong here, because you mentioned something about them actually going out there with environmentalists and checking the land and making sure, hey, we don't want to affect that. I mean, we know we are affecting it. Humans yep. affect environment. That's just, that's the name of the game. Yeah, it's the same game. But there's a lot of humans here moving here and they're on top right. of each other. Right. And so it's the, it's the way that we go about growth, I think is really important. And so uh, they're being very mindful about like, yeah. as we're adding their, their head, instead of just cutting down trees and throwing them in a shredder, they're moving trees from one area to the other, building out forests. It's kind of cool yeah, to see what and they're, they're doing. they're recycling some of that wood to build some of the houses in these mm -hmm. communities too, which I think yep. is insane and really neat. And they're being as careful as they can be during this development. The fact is development's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And whether you think that's good or bad, that's up to you. You keep that to your yourself or you know you can message us we yeah. love we love hearing your thoughts you drop in the comments everybody else does <laughs> right um but at the end of the day it's happening and so if we can just do it with a little bit of care which they clearly are in mm -hmm. a lot of these areas then it's going to be for the better yep. and yes it is always sad to see a tree get cut down but until i see you planting a tree in your front yard i don't want to <laughs> hear you complaining about it that's true that's true lots of lots of online trolls love to say what other people are doing wrong right but look in the mirror um all right so we got a, somebody asking ak a long time watcher so uh, can you please provide us an update on the home insurance situation. So I put a poll out on our Instagram uh, stories not too long ago, and I think I had nearly 30 people respond back. And I said, hey, if you've had an update to your insurance policy over the past couple months, let me know, did it go up or go down? Because there's new uh, there's new insurance companies coming to Florida. There's three new legislation. Right? Yeah. yeah, there's mm -hmm. uh, yeah three new ones with a ton of new products, which is hopefully bringing down rates. And I think of the roughly 30 people that reached out, more than 20 of them said that they saw a reduction in their overall home insurance rates. And Great. so I just 
just got one on one of our investment properties oh. and I was like a little nervous to open it up and I had a $300 per year reduction. What? Yeah, it went from like $2,200 a year to $1,900. See, I don't get that because my house is 100 years old. Well, so I pay the premium. You, you pay but the I'll premium. carry the weight for you guys. Yes. Uh, <laughs> King Noir says, hey, first time catching a live show. Great information. Cle Claremont seems to be booming. Yes. Any reason why? Uh, yeah. yeah, it's the new development. It's less ex It's less expensive than the more popular areas. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff going on there. There's a lot of there's inventory. You got new construction and that sort Tons of thing. Tons of new construction. Um, yeah, I think. And because we keep talking about it, that's probably why. Yeah, well, it's <laughs> us. It's us. You're welcome, Claremont. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, all right. Well, I think that's it for tonight. It's been awesome hanging out with you, Kristen. Oh my gosh. I have so much fun. Ken. Yeah, for sure. And thank so you guys fun. for tuning in. We'll be back next Thursday. And if you have any stories that you see all about, I've been encouraging a lot of people to like DM us their stories that they see. And that's actually really helpful because I don't, I, I'm obsessed with the news in Orlando and I don't see it all. No, no, we don't. We'd yeah. love to hear from the actual people who are here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, tell so, us. Thank you guys. See you soon.